Ladies and gentlemen, this is G Rex, and this is the black hole that kills galaxies. But channel Kuz Kuzar. Yeah, some of the black hole video. Is there anything better than Kuz Kuzar and black hole? Yeah, that should be the tagline in Google, YouTube, anything. Whenever you type Kuz Kuzar and black hole, that should be one of the top searches of all time. I don't know why. I just love black hole videos from Kuz Kuzar. This is like what in tenth video or something. I'm pretty sure there's been many because I, I think I've reacted to all of them. But yeah. Uh, how big black holes are, black hole this, black hole that. Now it's about a black hole that kills galaxies, right? I mean, you know the black holes kill star, kind of. Not really kill, but uh, stars, uh, there are unfortunate stars that goes into the way of black hole or something. Black hole doesn't seek out things to kill, right? A black black like, you know, who said, that? I don't know. Black holes are not some giant sucking machine, right? Uh, it's not it's not going to actively try to hunt you down right if you are, if you are unfortunate enough to go at a black hole then you're not screwed so i don't know which galaxies i mean there are super massive black holes in the center of the galaxies right but they don't kill galaxies right they are actually required to form the galaxy they are core of it without those super massive black i mean yeah i think kind of they can you know galaxies in theory can form i don't think but it will be stable enough like that so you need super massive black holes but yeah, this is going to be fun. Let's watch it. The universe looks like a vast, empty ocean sprinkled with rare islands of galaxies. But this is an illusion. Just a small fraction of all atoms are found in galaxies, while the rest is thought to be drifting in between in the intergalactic yeah. medium. Like the that is the biggest thing you find out when you go into anything space-related, like how interstellar space, intergalactic space, you know, first of all, whenever you find out there are planets, you know, without star, like a completely pitch black, you know, planets, right? Uh, between the stars, interst you know, interstellar space, you're like, what? Because that's like, you never thought of it that way. You always thought like, you know, planets are going to be around stars, but obviously they're going to be stars in between, some drifted or whatever. Same thing applies to galaxies as well, intergalactic space. You know, there are going to be things there like, you know, certain star because some, uh, you know, some matter got pushed out of the galaxy or something, right? Uh, lots of planets and shit, who knows? So that's, the, I don't know why that always feels captivating to me just thinking about that. Like imagine some no stars, no nothing, not even galaxy in pitch blackness, but there are very few atoms there compared to everywhere else, right? Intergalactic space has one of the fewer atoms, uh, you know, in density. And that there are certain things like stars and planets just rogue. That's just fucking awesome roots of some massive tree, gas spreads out from each galaxy, gravity funneling fresh mass into this dense cosmic forest. Here in the intergalactic medium are the raw materials of creation. Hydrogen and helium, woven into sheets and filaments that flow into galaxies where they eventually create stars. But if we look closely, we see who's actually in charge. Quasars, the single most powerful objects in existence. <laughs> As small as a I mean, I sort of assumed, like, I, I just, I don't know. I just thought that there's going to be something else that I'd never heard about or something. I mean, there's a possibility. But obviously, that's not the case. He's talking about quasars. Basically, supermassive black holes that are actively eating things. And the act... Quasar are state, not really a thing, right? Quasar are, you know, active supermassive black hole that is just churning, heating up gas around and things like that. Shooting out jets. Imagine a jet shooting out of here. Like, look at the galaxy on the jet. The level of energy that thing has grain of sand compared to the Amazon River, they reside in the centers of some galaxies, shining with the power of a trillion stars, blasting out huge jets of matter, completely reshaping the cosmos around them. They're yeah, so powerful that. that they can kill a galaxy. One of the most energetic and powerful thing in the world is not stars, it's actually a black hole. Just saying that feels funny, right? Black holes are it's pitch black because no energy, you know, nothing comes out of it, no light, no nothing. And yet, uh, it's so its gravity is so strong that around it all the matter heats up at a level that no star can even do and the level of energy this thing shoots out nothing in the in the world basically in the galaxy is capable of that besides a black hole what are they and how do they mold the structure of the universe at their whim all right Everywhere you look, weird things in the sky. Mm. In the 1950s, astronomers noticed mysterious loud radio waves coming from spots all over the sky. They were named quasi-stellar radio sources, or quasars, because they were dots like stars 
but were seen in radio waves rather than visible light. That's what quasi means, right? You hear, hear about quasi, quasar, quasi star. Quasar means it is there, but not really that type of thing. It's like mm, that kind of thing. Why quasar? Because you know, qu you know, it's it's a you know black hole basically, not a really a star, right? And it has activity that looks like a star. So it's a quasar, something like that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's something. Quasar just means that it is there, but not there. That kind of thing. Everything about them was strange. Some flickered, others emitted high-energy x-rays in addition to radio waves, but all seemed to be tiny. They Imagine all moved that all extremely of fast, black holes. as much as over 30% the speed of light. The only explanation was that they must have been so distant that their apparent speed was actually the expansion of the universe moving them away from us. But oh, these enormous that. distances meant that quasars couldn't just be stars, but the active cores of galaxies billions of light years away. And it gets crazy. Right, I don't want to pause too much, but you know, every time I wonder, like, am, am I gonna, uh, you know, ever hold a fucking telescope in a way that I can actually see distance quasar of anything? Not not quasar specifically, right? You need a radio wave telescope or something. But yeah, something very distance. Like, only thing I think you can really see from any telescope, I think, is Andromeda Galaxy because you can see that with eyes if you're high enough. I guess in South America somewhere. But yeah, it would be so great to see it your, with your own eyes, not something in the internet or TV. Crazier. To appear so bright and loud, given these vast distances, they are thousands of times brighter than the entire Milky Way. Yeah. Monsters exploding and screaming into the void with a violence not thought possible before. Because that's As a murder scene the sky, of stars. We discovered over a million quasars, and they all seem to be very far away. Looking into space far away means very long ago, because light takes so long to reach us. Quasars were common in the early universe, having peaked in number 10 billion years ago when galaxies and the universe itself were still very young. Let's go back in. I wonder why that is. <laughs> why was it so, uh, you know, frequent in early universe at 3 billion? Because fucking light takes time to come here. You can see distant galaxies and you can see it from distance. There's a reason why three billion year uh, old when the galaxy was, there were more quasars because anything newer probably didn't reach us here. So because of the time delay, that's why they are leaders. Not that there are no many quasars today, it's because you can see shit. I mean... <laughs> galaxies and the universe itself were still very young. Let's go back in time, just three billion years after the Big Bang, and see what was going on back then. The incredible power of quasars. How could an early baby galaxy be so incredibly bright and violent? All that light and radiation couldn't be stars, as there weren't nearly enough of them. And since galaxies tend to grow with time by merging, the starlight from small galaxies shouldn't be far brighter than any galaxy today. There's only one way to generate the vast amounts of energy a quasar shines with, feeding supermassive black holes. We still don't know how exactly they formed, but it seems that every galaxy has one in their center. But how can the brightest things in the universe... All right, I, I like that explanation about quasi-stars, that they used to be massively big stars, like that dwarfs fucking anything. You can't even fucking think about how big these stars were. Like Stephenson, you know, the largest star right now, doesn't even come close to. There were this kind of a humongous stars, they basically exploded, turned into a black hole because obviously they would, right? And, uh, you know, uh, over the time it just ate, ate and became this kind of supermassive black hole. It feels like very like, okay, you're just making that shit up because you can't account for that kind of a big, big black hole. There's a limit of black holes, right? After some time there's a big gap and then there are supermassive black holes. Like, where the fuck that come from? It's because of this. So people just assume that this is probably the case. It could not be, but it's fun to think about. Like imagine those kind of stars. Like, our Sagittarius A is really small compared to the biggest star that is, like Stephenson, in size. But then, then there are black holes that are even humongous than Stephenson, right? So it's really hard to process, like, how a star can be bigger than something like that, right? Just imagining your, your head hurts. Must be black holes which trap anything and everything that crosses their event horizon. Well, the light of a quasar is not coming from inside these black holes. Rather, it comes from the space around them, yeah, a massive a orbiting disc. disc of gas called an accretion disk. Quasars use the same fuel as stars to shine, matter. 
yeah, a crescent disk. People have this misconception that even the jets come out with, like, if nothing escapes black hole, not even the light, not really because space bends on the light, but even the light can come out, right? How is those jets are coming out? People like, how, how is that coming out of black hole if nothing escapes? It's not coming out of black hole. It's around it, the crescent disk, all the matter, right? All the matter tries to get inside the black hole, but can't. There's a limit like how fast you can get in. And yet, the gravity, the pressure, it just heats up, heats up at a level that it just shoots out at a jet, like a jet outside of it, right? It goes around the, and it's not even spinning. See, that's the thing. People think it's spinning. Why doesn't it just go in? Why is it spinning like that then come? It's not really spinning. It's really hard for us to, you know, understand three-dimensional way that this is a, a basically a hole. Now, hole, how do you say that? Uh, basically, a, you know, if, the, if, the, if the, this was two-dimensional, there would be a, you know, drop here, let's just say. Like in the sink, right? If you throw the ball, if your sink is round and, you know, sinks below, if you throw a ball, it will go round and round and they go in the center. This is three-dimensional case of that. It's really hard to picture that, but that's what's happening. All these things are still dropping down, even if we can see it going sideways, but it's still dropping down inside the black hole. And it heats up so much, it suits out like a jet. It's just that black holes are the Okay, see, see, people, comment down if you think I'm pausing too much, right? Because I don't know. Sometimes I pause too much and people piss, get pissed off, like, holy shit, the videos will learn a minute, you talk for so long, you're pausing too much. Some people like, I like, you know, I like that you're giving your take and not just watching video. It, it, you know, is this video too much pausing? Because I really need to find the balance, I guess. Most efficient engines for converting matter into energy in the universe. The energy released by matter falling into a black hole can be 60 times greater than that released by nuclear fusion in the core of a star. Yeah. Because the energy released by a black hole comes from gravity, not from nuclear reactions. Matter falling into a black hole speeds up to almost the speed of light before it crosses the event horizon, buzzing with an incredible amount of kinetic energy. Of course, once inside the black hole, it takes that energy with it. You only get to witness this energy if you drop your matter in the right way. <laughs> Fall <laughs> straight down and the outside universe gets nothing. But when you have a lot of matter, it... Because Gazat is black hole hater with those kind of animals and making black hole evil. Black hole wasn't evil, come on. It's minding his own business. It's you who gets in it, it, it doesn't chase you down, come on. Star is star system is stupid if it goes into the black hole. Black hole didn't invite it. <laughs> spirals in incredibly fast towards the event horizon, forming a disk. Collisions yeah. between particles and friction heated up to hundreds of thousands of degrees. In a space not much bigger than our solar system, the core of a galaxy can release many times more energy than all its stars combined. Mm. This is what a quasar is. Look at a that, super yeah. massive black hole having a feast. And these black holes eat a lot. Typical quasar. I'm imagining that meme. What, what meme is that? The guy goes to some kind of a food daily or something. It's like, give me two, two of those. Give me two of those. That's what black hole's saying. Consume one to a hundred Earth masses of gas per minute. 10 billion years ago, the universe was about a third of its current size. So mm. the intergalactic medium was much less spread out, meaning the filaments of gas around quasars could feed them a banquet, making them mm. vomit insane amounts of light and radiation. The brightest quasars power jets, tangling the magnetic field of the matter around them into a narrow cone. Like a particle accelerator, they launch enormous beams of matter out, plowing through the circumgalactic medium, forming plumes of matter that grow to hundreds of thousands. Look at this shit, that's a galaxy. It looks puny compared to this fucking thing. Like, imagine the scale of this. Thousands of light years in size. It's almost unfathomable <laughs> in scale. Yeah. A tiny spot in a galaxy carving out patches of the universe hundreds of thousands of light years long. But quasars can't eat. Yeah, see the uh, you know, gas clouds are so, I guess, because of the scale, really hard to pin down. But, I mean, scientists are wondering, are we passing through gas cloud right now? Because we, I mean, if we are inside of it, we can't really know it, right? I mean, there's a possibility that that might be the case. Long, maybe a few million years, because their feast ultimately kills their galaxy. Okay, that ad, something about the hero wars. I've seen that ad a lot and one of the most inappropriate shit I've ever seen. Like, how is that a game? And how, how aren't there regulatory bodies that stop it down? The ad just came about and I'm like, what the fuck? How quasars kill galaxies? Yeah, okay, that's the one question. maybe killing is a bit of an exaggeration. Yeah, the galaxy <laughs> is still there after its quasar turns off, but it will never be the same again. 
Quasars, being among the hottest and brightest things in the universe, break their galaxies by heating them up too much and stopping star formation. Stars are gas that collapsed in on itself and then got really hot. But in a cloud of gas that's already hot, atoms are moving quickly. When they collide, they hit hard, exerting pressure that resists gravity's squeeze. So mm. hot gas cannot form stars. Yeah, that's why literally the earliest point you know, after Big Bang, star didn't just came about like that because it was way too hot for it to form. Instead, the best gas for forming stars is already cold and mm. won't put up a fight when it's time to collapse into a star. On top of that, quasars push gas out of their galaxies. Not only does this starve oh, the quasar, but its why. galaxy loses the raw materials for new stars. Look at the evil show. As sad as this sounds, it might be a good thing for life. The alternative can be far more dangerous. Too many stars. Oh. New stars forming is usually... Imagine if another star just formed near our solar system and that just allegiance is in question. We'll be completely fucked, right? I mean, right now, the distance between stars are so ridiculously big. I mean, there's no, there's no point to even think about that. But if this wasn't the case, they would just get denser and denser, right? Followed by massive stars exploding in supernovae, so planets would be burned sterile. Yeah. But of course, it's more complicated. Like the intricacies of our own planet's biosphere, every piece of the galaxy is dependent on and influencing every other part of the galactic environment. Mm. While hot things like quasars and supernovae tend to push gas out of the galaxy, shockwaves and quasar jets can also compress gas, making new stars at least for a short time. But in See, general, we can that. say that without things... Imagine that, somehow like some... I mean, only thing I can say is video game because reality is like not possible. But imagine if you are somehow can travel between space fast, right? Just seeing, oh, look at that galaxy, look at that. And in between, you see that lonely star, like, oh my God, that's sad shit. It's right becoming there. a bit more chill. We would not exist today. Which yeah. brings us to our final question. Did the Milky Way have a quasar in the past? It's Probably. unclear if every galaxy went through a quasar phase, but understanding distant quasars may provide clues to the history of the Milky Way. I'm probably, right? Galaxies I mean, don't yeah. do a good job of preserving their history. Like sand on a beach, the endless churning mixes away the clues to their past. It's possible the... I mean, thinking the galaxy just formed and it was stable and no, basically, matter just pushed in the center of it, right? It, I mean, that feel like that's probably not going to be the case. So, yeah, we probably did have quasar. Matter probably did push, try to push in and it just, you know, quasar state was probably there. Right now it stabilizes, I guess, so there is no quasar. The Milky Way was once a quasar, which mm. may have allowed our supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star to have grown to four million times the mass of the Sun. Mm. And as dormant as it is now, Sagittarius A star could turn into a quasar in the future. Yeah, in a, a few state. billion years, the Milky Way will oh, merge yeah. with Andromeda. We've seen over a hundred double quasars in galaxies smashing together, where fresh gas is provided for the central black holes. But it won't last for long. When galaxies merge, so do their supermassive black holes. Ooh, look! Am I seeing? Look at this! is smaller than this. I like that small detail. I guess it's Milky Way black. You know, supermassive black hole. This is Andromeda one. Size is different, right? What am I seeing that? I'm pretty sure it's different. I like this touch. Sinking into the center of their new galaxy, kicking up dust and stars in every direction. We don't know whether this will happen, but it would truly be an incredible sight. Maybe some beings in what the, the far future like this. are going to witness it and be... Imagine waking up tomorrow, going <laughs> in your roof and fuck me. What is that? Something. First of all, the glow of this would be too much, I guess, if it's this closer. You won't be able to see it or something, right? But imagine seeing that as black hole in the center. Again, this would be so bright, I don't think you would be able to see the center. Uh, I mean, when I say this, I don't know, what you talking about? You can clearly, no, it's not, really. I mean, have you, have you gone outside and in the middle of the day saw the sun, how it looks, right? I mean, your eyes would be completely fucked, right? You can't see the borders of the sun, right? This would be something similar. This was so, it would be so bright. The center would be fuzzy, but you won't be able to see if this pitch black or what. It would look like one big sun or something. But imagine seeing that, right? In awe of what they see. Look at that. <laughs> but you don't have to wait that long. There are already plenty of fascinating things. Advertisement. Yeah, people, go to original video page link and support the Khazgazad by clicking on Brilliant Dot or Forces Nutshell. Khazgazad, one of the best channel. They went through certain drama recently, but I don't give a shit about that. This, you, we need science channels like this. This we saw. We need more, especially the level of shit that gets trend trending on YouTube. Something like this should be trending. It's a half a million view in like three four hours now. It's still not trending. Like what the fuck, man? 
Trending means people are talking about it, not just watching it, right? So people who watch Coursera are watching it, but it's not becoming trending, which is like, this should become trending, right? I don't know. But yeah, all this shit Microsoft Direct started. Starfield, I'm gonna be watching that. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do live, but yeah, I'll post the reaction to it. But yeah, th that was the black hole that kills galaxies. I mean, kind of makes sense. It, it takes the matter and suits up the jet and throw the matter away, right? Basically reducing matter from the galaxies, but you kind of need that. Yeah, we are not, our uh, black hole is not a quasar, right? A <coughs> uh, long time ago when I was a kid, I was confused. Like, wait a minute, uh, supermassive black holes are called quasars, quasars, basically. And then I'm like, okay, so we have a quasar, and then no, we are not a quasar. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Don't we have a supermassive black hole? But then I realized quasar is a state, not really a supermassive black hole. All right. All right, well, if you like my next don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you next time.